If the JHA determines that a task exposes personnel to significant hazards, a permit to work must be issued before the work can begin. The objective of the permit to work system is to implement comprehensive risk control measures before the work begins. Each permit must include a written description of the risks to personnel and how they will be managed during the performance of the task. Although the process takes time, the effort is trivial compared to the ordeal of coping with the aftermath of accidents and injuries when this formal approach to controlling risk is ignored. Let's look at specific examples. The procedures we're going to recommend for a working at height permit apply to the other permit types we'll discuss later. Whenever personnel are exposed to injury from a fall or from working over the side, they must obtain a working at height permit before beginning the task. The task leader prepares the permit in consultation with the chief mate. Permit requirements are discussed at the work site during the safety briefing. The two supervisors and members of the work party sign the permit as verification that they understand the hazards associated with the task and accept the mitigation techniques established to control the risks. As with all permits to work, one copy is attached to the JHA and posted at the job site. Other copies are distributed to the officer of the watch and posted around the ship as required. The duration of the permit is established on the document. Once it expires, work must be stopped until a new permit is issued. As with any task that requires a permit, supervisory personnel must monitor the work from beginning to end. Permitted tasks are subject to regular safety audits. Don't be surprised if you're asked to stop and discuss the task with a supervisor. As the individual closest to the work, you have critical insights into whether the JHA and the work permit have addressed all of the potential hazards and risks. If you perceive that an unsafe condition exists, you have the right and the responsibility to stop the work. The worksite must be restored to safe operating condition and the permit canceled before routine operations in the area can be resumed. Confined spaces often contain toxic or explosive atmospheres capable of causing severe injury or death to unprotected personnel. Even partially enclosed spaces that are not routinely ventilated can be dangerous. The list of confined spaces that pose hazards to the vessel and its crew includes fuel and water tanks, cargo tanks, lubricating oil tanks, slop and waste oil tanks, ballast tanks, sewage tanks, coffer dams, duct keels, void spaces, pipelines and fittings, boilers, pump rooms, main engine crankcases, etc. Because ships can be dramatically different in configuration, no list can be all-inclusive. It is vital that all potentially hazardous spaces are tested before personnel are permitted to enter and retested as necessary throughout the entry. The required frequency of testing, the number of persons permitted to enter the space, their names, the identity of the standby watch, and other critical pieces of information are recorded on the permit to work. A hot work permit is required for any task that produces open flames, sparks, high temperatures, electric arcs, etc. Examples range from hammering, grit blasting and chipping to welding, burning and grinding. Aboard tankers, the use of non-intrinsically safe equipment on deck or in other hazardous spaces requires a permit to work. Among the essential permit requirements are the performance of flammable atmosphere tests at the work site before and during the task, clearing flammable materials and fire hazards away from the work area, using fire blankets or water spray to contain fire spread, staging firefighting appliances at the work site, and the deployment of a trained fire watch who monitors the work on a continuous basis. Hot work permits must be approved by the master or chief engineer. Hey there! Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon.
so you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone.